Today I'm going to learn you something about infrared photography. I have here a Panasonic, whatever that says. It's a bridge camera that I have modified. I removed the IR filter on the sensor so it can take color infrared photos. And we'll see what that means in a minute. Right now I'm at the lovely Arley Gardens on this 200 degree October day. <sighs> And I'm already out of breath. Notice anything red? So traditionally, in order to take infrared photos, you would need an inter a filter on the front of the lens that blocks out all light except for infrared light. But the resulting images will be 100% red. And then you have to mess with color balance and blah, blah, blah in post. Just removing the IR filter though, you can see it's still red, but it also allows the other colors like blue and stuff to show up. So you can take infrared color photos. That's one big tree, mama. So we got some portals there. And if I can do anything one-handed, it'll be zooming in on turtles. Look at them go. They're torting. This is hard to do with one hand. So what infrared photography does is it captures Normally, only the infrared light bouncing off of whatever, which usually turns foliage white or, well, yeah, you can make it whatever color you want in post, but usually white. That's why you'll see all of the foliage is red, because it's technically white. <laughs> and it usually works really well with clouds. See, the sky's still blue, clouds are still white but the plants are also white. You can't see it, but I can. There's a big old blue heron right there. Let's see if I can zoom one-handed on it. Oh God, oh Jesus, sweet Neptune. Oh man, there's cormorants in the water. Oh, I can't do it. This is impossible. Shit, I didn't click the button. Can I? Let me, let me focus up first. <laughs> You know what? I'm just going to get closer. <laughs> Look at him. Sitting there menacingly. So, I have a series in mind for photos of infrared animals. And I just got the greatest squirrel you've ever seen. Look at that. Oh, man. God, I hate living. There's a, uh... I almost said squirtle. <laughs> There's a turtle over here. But I doubt, oh, there she is. Oh my god. I was looking at these boys over here, and then I was getting ready to leave and found everybody else over here. You can probably imagine I took a picture of that. Also, a big spider. I took a real good picture there once. Why does it look like it's covered in kelp? <laughs> These are not natural gooses, by the way. At least it's still hot out. Here we are in Lightroom, and before we get started on how I would process these, uh, first off, I've gone ahead and culled all the ones that I didn't want away. Normally, if you want to shoot infrared, you have to screw a filter on the front of your lens. And the resulting pictures will look something like this. The entire picture is going to be real red, and then when you bring it in, you you change the white balance. It, it helps to make it black and white. That's how I got 
this image here, uh, which is pretty cool. Even though the camera did the auto ISO thing and tried to use a 25,000 ISO because it wasn't smart enough to tell me to change it. <laughs> so, the advantage of modifying your camera, this is a point and shoot that you can you can do it with pretty much any point and shoot. You just take it down, get to the sensor, remove a little piece of glass that's in the way. It'll either be clear with like a shimmery redness on it, or in the case of this one, it was just like a blue piece of glass. And then you put everything back together and you're good to go. The advantages of modifying that instead of using a filter is that using the filter requires longer wait times and like shutter speeds and you'll probably need you will need a tripod and you have to focus and then put the filter on like you have to manual focus then you put the filter on then you take the picture and it's it's very annoying so you can just modify a camera by removing the IR sensor and it will allow you to use the camera as normal it's just picking up infrared light now and as you can see from ones like these it keeps the bluish sky and stuff still but you can see that the the leaves are red and so if you were to go in here and you pick what you want to be your target neutral oh cool it shows you up in the top left there a little preview that's i literally never noticed that but that looks pretty cool so you want that to be your target neutral boom now these green mimosa leaves are actually whitish and then of course you can go in and tweak everything uh how you like i just want to go through a couple of these because i wanted to see how it would react to different lighting scenarios that's kind of cool it keeps a lot of the color and then you can just sort of like drown out other things this building is pure white uh, this was greenish. These were green cactuses. So, what do we got? Let's go with one of these. It's kind of funny to see a white cactus. Okay, this one is one I actually want to do. You can see just how red these leaves are. So, I believe these are going to become incredibly white. Oh, yeah, look at that. Incredibly white. That looks so cool. I'll mess with that more because I I just wanted to see how this would react with the birdies. Uh, I guess I have to do that to make the sky blue. <laughs> That's not actually different than how it looked in real life. Uh, okay, this was when we got to the park. Actually, probably want like yoink. And of course, like I said, you can uh, tweak to your heart's content or whatever. Uh, you can actually keep it red like you can keep the foliage red and it'll look like aerochrome sure spelled all that correctly whatever <laughs> uh that's not no it's not a website you damn thing also it's still spelled wrong i just want to see kodak aerochrome was a color infrared film so you can get your results to look like aerochrome with the blue skies and the white clouds and the red foliage and the blue waters and stuff and it's real cool and I suggest you watch this video because <laughs> Grainy Days is great. <sighs> this is just a cheap easy way to do it digitally. I got this, I don't know how much this thing costs in real life but I got it at a pawn shop for $20. This one, everybody's got a point and shoot somewhere in their sock drawer or something. They're basically free. Uh, so yeah. Pretty cool to just grab one and do whatever. I wanted to see how this would look with the boaties. Actually, I'm just gonna keep using the clouds. Okay, looks pretty normal, except the uh, trees in the background. Looks pretty cool. Let's go. Eh, it's experimental, babe. Cannot set the white balance here, because it's pure white. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I didn't even see... Yeah, that's not even focused. I don't care about you. This one I thought would be cool. Maybe I'll keep this one red so you can see all the white birds 
stand out still. But uh, I'll go in and edit these more uh, off camera. I just wanted to see what things look like. Here's that boy. This one, this is a cool shot, I think. I think I'm going to be keeping that one red also. Again, just messing about, seeing what I, I like the way it turns leaves and stuff white. Uh, it makes it look snow. Oh, there's my boy, the squirrel. Squirrel, where do I want a target neutral enough? That's pretty cool. Oh man, look how absolutely sharp I got that boy. Look at, see, look how cool the white leaves look. Just a cool look. Uh, that looks pretty ugly. These are my boys, the turtles. Turtle boys. That just looks like a regular picture of turtles. <laughs> I took this one because, as you can see down here, a hundred turtles on a log. Just a little windy path. Pretty cool, I might make that red. This is that spider, spider warning. It just looks like a spider. Okay, kind of, kind of cool with the yellowy, the yellowy white branches. Oh, that's very cool. <laughs> as in cold. As I'm sure you remember, but that was green. Uh, let's see what do we got here. Eh. And final picture I took, which is pretty cool actually. I keep that red. You like? I I just like the. I like the contrast between the blue and the whitish. Anyway, I'll go off camera and uh, edit these to how I like them. So, as with all photo editing sessions, I've got it down to many less than what it was. Thought the white cactuses were funny. Don't really know how I feel about them. This one's pretty cool. Infrared always does really well with black and white. This is pretty neat. Had to make the squirrel black and white. Had to make this one black and white. And this one is red. Uh, look, they can't all be winners, alright? But they can all exist. 